Hi everyone, this is Katherine Boland with the MEMA Washington office. Thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to join us for today's webinar. I have one o'clock on the dot right now. Um, people I see are still dialing in. Just an FYI, you are all muted on the phone, but you will be able to either raise your hand if you've input your, um, I, your ID, or if you can't, if you haven't done that, you will be able to type in questions. Uh, but we'll we'll get started in one more minute. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, thank you all. This is Catherine Boland with the MEMA Washington office. Uh, and today you're participating in a summit informational webinar in advance of our legislative summit next week. In the room with me, I have Bill Freimoyer, uh, another MEMA lobbyist. He's relatively new to the association, started last month. Uh, some of you have, prob have already met him, some of you have not, but you'll meet him next week. Also have Melanie Weiland here in the room with me. She's our grassroots manager and has been helping me organize and, and coordinate the summit. She's also relatively new. She joined us in February. So if you haven't had a chance to meet her yet, you'll meet her next week. And then on the phone from Advocacy Associates, we have Katie Yakaki. Uh, once again this year, we are working with Advocacy Associates to help schedule Hill meetings. We're using their app. She's going to walk through the app and walk through your schedules and how you access your schedule. Uh, since this is, since we are a trade association and there are competitors in um, on the phone and on the webinar, just start with an antitrust reminder. I don't expect we'll have any issues with the conversation we're having today, but we can't talk pricing, won't talk uh, customer relationships, et cetera. You guys all know the drill. If you have questions, um, shoot me an email, type something into the question box or raise your hand but like i said i really don't suspect that we will have any problems today um, so we're here to talk about the summit it's next week uh thank you for registering for the summit we do look forward to seeing you next week uh, the event is april 30th to may 1st i just realized i didn't correct the date on that sorry for the year wrong but that uh, wrong year but it's april 30th and may 1st 2019 at the Watergate Hotel. We do look forward to seeing um, you all there. Uh, on the agenda, we really, uh, first off, a thank you to our sponsor, But So Long. We're kicking off with a early arrivals reception at their offices on Monday, April 29th. In the email that was sent around to registrants this morning is a link to how to RSVP for that. If you haven't RSVP'd, I strongly encourage you to. It's a a lot of fun, great event, and it gives us uh, a chance to meet and talk to some of the attendees prior to uh, the event. And I haven't talked to Butts along, but I know they usually invite some special guests. Um, so we look forward to seeing them on Monday evening. Tuesday morning, we kick off. 8.30 a.m. is re when registration starts. We will have breakfast available if you're flying in early or if you're, com if you're staying the night before. Uh, at 9 o'clock, we'll have a meeting very similar to this uh, seminar, but we'll have a briefing beforehand uh, covering similar things, how to hold a Hill meeting, talk about the issue papers, et cetera. Bill Freimoyer and Tim Lynch, our outside lobbyist, I expect will uh, be the ones leading that. Uh, I, I will probably be dealing with some other details at the time. Uh, but that's at 9 o'clock. At 10 o'clock, we will formally kick off the event. Bill Long, our new president and CEO, will welcome everyone with his welcoming remarks. At 1020, we're going to have a town hall conversation with two bipartisan former members of Congress, Congressman Joe Crowley from New York, uh, 
just left Congress at the beginning of this year. He's um, been in Congress for a number of years, senior member of House Ways and Means, senior Democrat. And then joining Crowley will be um, former Congressman Phil English. Phil English, many of you know from past summits, he uh, represented the Erie, Pennsylvania area. And he's been at Errant Fox for about 10 year, eight, 10 years or so. And Charlie Johnson, one of our board members, will be um, moderating that discussion. And it's really more of a conversation talking about politics, talking about trade, talking about what Congress can theoretically get done this year or not, and talk about the moon on Capitol Hill. Um, other presentations that afternoon, we'll have uh, Charlie Cook as our luncheon speaker. He's spoken regularly at our summit in the past. He's a great political commentator and political analyst, and he should have some really interesting things to say both about the new Congress and what could happen in November 2020. Um, hard to believe we're already talking about those elections. Ann Wilson, our boss, will give her overview of the issues and we'll have small group discussions. And then one thing we're really looking forward to is we are going to have a panel discussion or presentations. We're still working on the Canadian ambassador, but we have confirmed Ambassador Barsena from Mexico. And if we cannot get Ambassador McNaughton from Canada, we do have Deputy Ambassador Hillman scheduled. Uh, and they'll both be able to give their country's views of USMCA, uh, trade moving forward, and other things. Um, we're looking forward to that. I've heard they're both uh, fantastic speakers. We're saying they're supposed to be great, and either Hillman or McNaughton. Uh, we hope to ha we plan to have that agenda issue finalized, hopefully in the next day or so. At two o'clock, the formal presentations end and we'll depart either for agency meetings or congressional meetings. And when when we send out information on the app, you'll see what your individual schedules are. Uh, the next day, we'll start out uh, early in the morning, as we always do. Really pleased to announce that Congresswoman Jackie Walorski from Indiana is going to be our industry champion award recipient this year. And she will be attending the breakfast and addressing attendees. For those of you who don't know Congresswoman Walorski, she represents the South Bend area uh, in northern Indiana and has been absolutely fantastic on a, the variety of trade issues that are out there, whether it's steel and aluminum tariffs in the exclusion process or auto 232 tariffs or what have you. She's on House Ways and Means as a Republican. Uh, and she's been absolutely fantastic for the industry. So we're really thrilled that she uh, has agreed to accept our industry champion award. Um, and after breakfast, uh, folks will depart a, once again for either Capitol Hill meetings, uh, agency meetings, or for some other meetings that we have scheduled. At noon, there is an optional lunch. Uh, if you're, you are welcome to come back and if your schedule allows, join us for lunch before either departing or spending a few more days in Washington, and then at two o'clock the program ends. Uh, so it's it's going to be a lot in pro in roughly 28 hours or so, 28 30 hours. So we're we're looking forward to it. We hope you're looking forward to it as well, and we appreciate the time and investment you're putting in uh, by coming to Washington to join us. One thing that's different for those of you who've been attending for a number of years, we've gone mobile the last few years. Um, and like I said at the beginning, we were working with advocacy associates to provide scheduling and advocacy day help um, for the meetings, as well as providing the app. One thing, just as an FYI, group leaders will have uh, folders with leave behind both the issue papers and facilities spreadsheets. Uh, but we also urge you to bring any materials you'd like to share with your congressional reps that you're meeting with as well. But since we've gone mobile and Advocacy Day is going to be on site to um, troubleshoot and assist with both scheduling questions as well as app questions, let me turn it over to Katie. 
Okay, great. Thanks so much, Catherine. Uh, so again, my name is Katie Akaki, and I'm part of the team that has been scheduling your congressional visits for Tuesday, April 30th and Wednesday, May 1st. Uh, and this is just a lovely airbrushed picture of me. I don't look this good in real life, just so you can <laughs> put a picture with a disembodied voice, but you can go to the next slide. <laughs> Uh, today, I'd like to tell you about our Advocacy Day app, um, which some of you may be familiar with if you participated last year, and you will have access to it uh, once again this year for the Legislative Summit. Uh, so Advocacy Day is a free uh, multi-platform app, so it's available for iPhone or iPad in the App Store or for Android in the Google Play Store. You'll just search for Advocacy Day, all one word, or you can also access a web version of the app from the link listed here. Uh, and you're more than welcome and in fact encouraged to download the app in advance of coming to DC. Uh, now before you go furiously scribbling all this down, just know that you will be receiving an email uh, with detailed instructions on how to download and use the app, uh, as well as your personalized login uh, later this week. So uh, please don't you know, feel the need to write this all down. You'll be getting all this information again. For now, I just want to go over the basic features for you and give you an idea of what you'll be able to do with the app. Next slide, please. So one of the main features of the app is that you can view your personal congressional visit schedule. So when you log into the app, you're automatically brought uh, to this schedule page. And in addition to viewing your meetings there, you'll also receive a push notification if there's a change to one of your meetings. And we'll also call you with any changes once you're on the Hill. Uh, we will also be emailing you a copy of your schedule, um, but we do highly recommend you use the app. It will always have your most up-to-date meeting schedule um, and it has a lot of other really useful features as well. I do want to note, since you'll be able to view your schedule as soon as you receive your logins, um, that all meeting times are tentative and subject to change, uh, and some of your meetings may not be finalized yet. Uh, the congressional schedule is very fluid, um, so some meetings don't get confirmed until a day or two before. Uh, and as I mentioned, the app will always have your most up-to-date schedule. So if you're still waiting on one or more of your meetings to be confirmed, just check in the app at any time. And if it's been confirmed, then the details of that meeting will show up for you there on the schedule page. Next slide. I also want to talk about some of the features that you can utilize once you're on the Hill and in your meetings. Uh, first, you'll be able to map to each of your meetings, including GPS enhanced walking directions. Uh, you'll also be able to take notes about your meetings, view important talking points that you should try to touch on during your meetings, and view your leave behind materials right in the app. Uh, you also have the option to email these electronic versions of the leave behinds. So in addition to handing a piece of paper to the office that you meet with, you can also email uh, those same materials directly to them as well, which is a great way to follow up with the office after the meeting. You'll also be able to fill out a meeting feedback form about each of your meetings, uh, which we highly, highly encourage you to do. MEMA really uh, appreciates hearing about how your meetings went and any follow-up that may need to be done and so on. Uh, there are also some social features in the app that you can take advantage of. Um, you can post to your Twitter straight from the app, and you can also send messages to other participants uh, through a secure chat platform. Next slide, please. Hey, Katie, hold on one second. We, hey, could you hold on one second? I think we're ha uh, I, we got a note that we're having some technical difficulties. Can someone type in if you're able to see the current slide? Okay. okay, keep going, Katie. Sorry, we, we got great. I were stuck. No problem at all. Um, so I also want to just go over some of the features that you can start taking advantage of in the app as soon as you receive your login information. Uh, one of the great things that you can do is start researching the members of Congress that you're going to be meeting with. So from the legislative tab in the app, you can click on any of the members whose offices you'll be meeting with uh, to read through that member's bio, uh, view their committee and subcommittee information, look through their various social media pages and their website, and also also see any running news stories that have mentioned their name. Um, you can also start again reviewing those documents and materials that have been put into the app, including your priority issues and talking points for your meetings. 
And finally, you can also do some research on the specific bills that are relevant to your issues, uh, including reading a summary of each bill, seeing the current status of the bill, and most importantly, seeing who is currently co-sponsoring each bill and whether any of the members of Congress you're meeting with are co-sponsoring that bill yet. Uh, so these are some of the great features that you can take advantage of um, as soon as you get your login, just to start preparing for your meetings and crafting your messages and your asks for each meeting before you even get to DC. Next slide, please. So the app is pretty intuitive, um, but feel free to also reach out to us at any time with any questions. And of course, we can also answer any questions about the app or schedules or anything else when we're on site with you. I just wanted to list my contact information here as well as my colleague Jared's contact information. Jared will be on site with you next week in DC. Uh, and there's also a section of the app where you can send us questions directly. So that's it for the app. Uh, like I said, just be on the lookout for an email with your app login information. Uh, we look forward to seeing you all. And with that, I'm gonna pass it back to Catherine to go over some additional logistics about your congressional visit. So Catherine, back to you. Thanks so much, Katie. Um, for those of you who've attended the summit in the past, this may be old hat. For those of you who are new, and I know there are several new folks on the webinar, um, just some basics to keep in mind on Capitol Hill. There are always security lines uh, at both the House and Senate office building, and like my logic that scheduling something immediately after Easter recess, I know there are other trade associations who look at the calendar um, with the same viewpoint I have, and they know Congress is always here. Uh, they take a week before Easter, a week after Easter, and are always back that second week. Uh, so they schedule their fly-ins the same time. So it's going to be a fly-in week. Uh, on Capitol Hill, so the line will be long. We we do our best, Katie and her team do their best to allow plenty of time between meetings. Uh, once you're in the House buildings, you don't have to exit uh, to get to another House building, same thing on the Senate side. Um, if, you, uh, if your group leader is not as familiar with Washington as uh, some of the Washington locals are, you can always ask Capitol Police or um, ask, actually ask anyone for directions. People are pretty friendly. But we, we are trying to allow time between meetings. We expect roughly a 20-minute meeting or so. If you're getting a member of Congress, sometimes the members of Congress have even less time than that. Prepare for the unexpected. As Katie said, things in Washington can be fluid, um, and things just can happen. Meetings can happen in hallways. Meetings can happen in the cafeteria. You can walk somewhere else and have a meeting outside of a con uh, committee hearing room. The member may, may be scheduled to be there, but may really only drop by. Just be flexible. Expect the unexpected and um, have a good attitude about it. It's usually um, a, a lot of things are going on and it's an exciting time to be in Washington and spring is always busy. If you do get staff, uh, and that's not uncommon. Keep in mind a few things about the staff. I've had members of our uh, members of our company members uh, raise with me that they're surprised at how young the staff are. Staff is very young. I was a 25-year-old Hill staffer advising a U.S. senator on policy, so I get it. But uh, keep in mind, staff young, but they do have the ear of their bosses. Um, I mean, I'll just, as an anecdote, one of our outside lobbyists has told me he likes to bring clients when they're going to the house, I take them via metro instead of a cab. So as they're going up the escalator, they're at the Capitol South Metro, he can see, get an idea of what the um, house staff is like. And apparently one of his clients one time asked him if there was a college nearby. And he asked, well, why, why, why do you say that? It's like, because everyone around here is so young, they look like college students. No, those are Hill staffers. Uh, so just just expect that they're going to be young. Um, well, can I just add a couple? Of things? course, and Bill, Bill, please. Yeah, yeah, and, and uh, I also worked on the Hill, and it is they're going to seem young, but they're really, really smart, and they expect a really focused meeting, 20 minutes, key points, and we're going to be going over some of those key points in just a moment. The other thing I really wanted to reinforce that's an important tip that Catherine gave you all is about the security line. If you go in on the House side and you have additional meetings on the House side, there are tunnels underground between each of the three House buildings. Do not go outside and back in. Use those tunnels. Now, you have to go out if you're going over to the Senate side from the House side. But if you're on either the House or Senate side, 
just stay there and stay behind the lines. Yeah, and same thing on the Senate. There's tunnels connecting the three Senate buildings as well. Um, there are a lot of freshmen in this Congress. There's over 100 freshmen. We are going to be meeting with a number of these freshmen. Uh, so one of the things to, I would focus on um, accomplishing, particularly if you're new to the summit or if you're meeting with someone who's new to you, the biggest thing to accomplish for something like this, and I'm going to use Anne's first date analogy, this is a first date. We're building a relationship, making a district connection. Many of the meetings have been organized based on company footprint. Uh, if you're a trade professional or if your focus is really technology, you may have a slightly different uh, looking meeting schedule than you're used to, and it may not be where you have facilities, but there was uh, thought put into who you're meeting with. So, so they're either leaders on committees of interest or they're leaders on some of the issues we've been talking about. But if you have that district connection, make the district connection and become a resource. Because one of the things, I'll go back to one of my old bosses, um, uh, the late Senator George Voinovich from Ohio, Everything for him was about jobs, jobs, jobs. How did it go back to the state? How did it go back to the economy? As employers in many of these districts, many of these states, become a resource. You want to invite these folks, whether it's staff coming out during August recess or the member of Congress or even district staff. You want to invite these offices to your facilities so they know more about your company, know, about, know more about what you're making, and know more about what the employment in the district is. Jobs, jobs, jobs. It, Just to add to that, say if you, when you're going in, you're going to have a list of the jobs uh, of the facilities, the MEMA facilities in the particular district or state. Be sure to stress that because they're interested in, the, in their own states. They're also interested in overall the huge footprint of the parts uh, companies. We're the largest manufacturing sector in the United States, 871,000 jobs. Members a lot of them haven't heard that. A lot of them are freshmen. Be sure to reinforce that sort of a big point because the footprint is so big on this organization uh, and, and your member companies uh, on the jobs front. It's really important stat. So some do's and don'ts. Uh, and many of you, like I said, many of you have done this before. Some of you are new. Wear comfortable shoes. There is a lot of walking. Um, you're welcome to wear your heels uh, if you're a uh, female, but or uh, wear, wear your nice dress shoes, but just keep in mind, wear shoes that you can walk in because there is a fair amount of walking. Um, bring company and product literature that, you can, that you're comfortable bringing. It's one of those things, MEMA will be providing a fair amount of information in the packets. Um, as Bill said, we'll have the facility list for the district, we'll have our issue papers, and that's great. But really, who these members members of Congress want to hear from is who the employers are in their district. So if you have flyers on each one of your facilities, or if you have flyers on your products, or if you have flyers on job training programs, um, bring those, feel free, and supplement what we're, we're providing, supplement with your own personal materials. Be prepared to discuss your company in those districts, in those states, number of employees, what, what kind of training are you engaging in? Job training has become a very important discussion point um, in Washington as the skills gap is more and more understood and as manufacturing jobs are changing. Uh, so be prepared, be prepared to talk about some of your manufacturing training. Talk about the, your product. Talk about challenges that you're facing, whether it's regulations from EPA or the Department of Labor, things that are costing your business, talk about trade, how trade is impacting you. Ask what issues that the legislators focused on. You might be able to find some overlap on things you're doing back in the communities. Um, particularly for some of these new guys, figure out what they may want to accomplish um, and what they're interested in and what their goals are for their tenure in Congress. I know I said this before, but I'll go back to it. Invite a member of Congress or their staff to do a facility tour. Um, we've already talked about how young Capitol Hill staff are. Many of them have never worked anywhere but Capitol Hill or in Washington. But like Bill said, they're very bright young people. And one of the reasons they're doing these jobs is because it's interesting and they get to learn a lot of things. And when I was a Hill staffer, I loved going out to manufacturing facilities or farms or wherever I was going uh, back in Ohio. 
just to learn more about what was happening in the state. They're great opportunities, and staff and members of Congress are always happy to do this. A um, couple of things of don't do. There's lots of things to do, but a couple of things just don't. If someone, particularly if you're a Republican and you're in a Democrat's office, or if you're a Democrat and you're in a Republican's office, or even if you're a Republican who may not like President Trump, but you're in an office that's a big Trump supporter, don't argue. There are things you're going to have to agree to disagree on. Uh, and that's just part of working in Washington right now. The members of Congress don't always get that. Um, but we as a trade association, we as representatives of an industry, we do get that. Another thing, don't, and this is more because it's just illegal and inappropriate, don't discuss politics or campaign fundraising in the offices. There's only certain people who are allowed to discuss that, and it's an inappropriate discussion to have in a federal office building. So, next slide. Now we can talk about the messages. We sent around the issue papers earlier this morning that should be final. There may be some tweaks made between now and Tuesday, but if you have not had a chance to review those, uh, take a look at them. The big messages are, we are a global industry. We are the largest manufacturing sector of jobs nationwide with 871,000 direct jobs in all 50 states. Um, another key message, we are innovators, whether it's higher fuel economy or advanced safety technologies, or aftermarket work, um, we're innovators and talk about the innovate, innovative work we're doing. Uh, some of the actions we need and some of the actions we'll be talking about, we need policies that support a global marketplace. The industry has changed. This is not a 1950s supply chain anymore. We are a global industry relying on global inputs in vehicles, whether they're heavy trucks or passenger cars. So we need policies that support that marketplace. A big push, um, particularly now, just given the uncertainty with the Auto 232 investigation, tariffs are harmful and causing stress and uncertainty for the industry. And it will be um, that, that stress, that uncertainty is hindering investments. We need policies that promote vehicle safety. NCAP needs to be updated. Vehicle inspections are important to our aftermarket. Heavy-duty safety technology has been developed and being deployed in a limited basis, but getting that technology out there will make buses and trucks safer. Cleaner vehicles, if you're in the if you're in the cafe or fuel efficiency realm, cleaner vehicles, we need policies that support them. Cafe is, um, the administration is working on a new cafe and greenhouse gas rule that we're, we haven't liked what we've seen so far, but our message to Congress is we need one national program. On the heavy duty side, we support phase two and we, across the board, we support research and development funding that allows public private partnerships for companies, the government, colleges, et cetera, to work together to develop future advanced technologies to make vehicles cleaner uh, and burn less fuel. We need policies that promote consumer choice for aftermarket. If you're an aftermarket company, I know there's several coming, um, there, there's a very real fear that as, tech, as vehicles get more and more advanced and as you need access to data in your vehicle, that it's going to get harder for the aftermarket to repair vehicles. Workforce development, I touched on it briefly, but we need policies that encourage workforce development. One of the goals in USMCA, uh, the new NAFTA, is bringing jobs back to the U.S. We already are having a hard time, we, you guys, are having a hard time filling manufacturing jobs as it is. If we're going to bring more jobs back to the U.S., which is a great goal, we need some training assistance to get there. That's one of our goals for USMCA. Uh, Bill, yeah, to I, add? Just, I just want to take a minute to thank you all for coming. It's always critical to have members in town to talk the stories of their companies in the districts and states around the country. This year is more critical than ever, I guess, last year and this year because of all the trade challenges we face. And as you know, we face an alphabet soup of trade challenges between Section uh, 232 investigations on steel and aluminum, a potential Section 232 on autos, and a Section 301 uh, China investigation that's been ongoing that they're trying to solve. Uh, all of that is covered in one-pagers, I think, very succinctly. So don't 
worry about that. The overlying message is the important message. We need rational trade policies that encourage growth and expansion of trade. We're very concerned that all of this is undermining that. There is a positive message with regard to administration's trade policies. We're not totally there yet, but on USMCA, they have made some market opening maneuvers, and we're obviously um, not fully endorsing that yet, but that's in the materials as well. Uh, we think that there's a lot of steps forward there, uh, and, and that, most importantly, is the administration engaging in pro-growth, pro-trade policies. So this area is probably, I'd say, the number one area uh, of emphasis for us here, and probably, my guess, is for your companies as well, but everything's re really, really important, uh, and I just wanted to highlight the trade aspect. And one other thing, just to echo and take it one step further from what Bill said, uh, he's right, things are looking up, we're getting close on USMCA, and in my conversations on China recently, making sure that elected officials know, while we are not supportive of tariffs as a tool to get China to comply the reports we're hearing out of USTR and other federal agencies on China sound like they're going in the right direction and we are very supportive of improving trade policies and trade agreements with China. Intellectual property rights protection, brand protection uh, are incredibly important to all of our members. Forced technology transfers, um, policies on that are incredibly important. We've already talked about we're a global industry. If you're in China, you're in China for a reason, and it's not just to get cheap China labor. It's because you're supplying the Asian market as well. So we need better protections for your intellectual property, whether it's patents or trademarks or brands in China. So we are seeing uh, some of the things we're seeing on China are promising. On the technology side, we have a meeting scheduled for those um, – and, and I apologize that not everyone will be able to go to this, but we do have a group going to meet with a large group at NHTSA. Um, use that as an opportunity to talk about technology. Lee Marino, my colleague, is going to be one, the staffer uh, putting that meeting together. So what, we will we'll share more information for those of you going to that meeting um, later, but talk about what we need certainty-wise from NHTSA. Be prepared to talk about what we need certainty-wise on technology from Congress, particularly if NHTSA is not doing what we would prefer they do on whether it's NCAP or automated vehicles or things like that. Um, like I said at the outset, some of you technology-minded folks are meeting with more technology-minded offices. Uh, so be prepared to talk about that. You'll be hearing more specific, individualized information from us over the next couple of days. Um, um, just, just one other thing to wrap into this, and going back to you all and, and your story, the innovation is, is really of interest to members and to staff. So if you can tie a story about trade to uh, the sub global supply chain that makes possible your innovation of a particular really cool new uh, product that you've developed, a good, cool new component, whatever it might be, that's always very helpful as well. The illustrative examples from your company, whether it's on trade, whether it's on uh, EPA regulations, on CAFE, whether it's on technology development overall. And, and we talked about bringing printed materials, and one thing we haven't mentioned, uh, but I will throw out there, if you have a component that is small and something you can easily carry around, whether it's in your pocket or your bag, it's show and tell, and if you have something that you can carry around and that you'd like to carry around, keep in mind you will be with companies, other companies and potential competitors, but if you have samples of things not to give but just to show what you're making and it's something you will be carrying with you, so make sure it's carryable, feel free to bring that, and if you've got questions, give me a call, give Bill a call, and we'd be happy to talk to you about um, things that you can and can't do. I mean, you do have to go through security, and sometimes security will give things a funny look, but I've never not been lit into the building with product when I've been trying to sample. But that's kind of it for our big 
presentation, but now is an opportunity for you to ask questions. Um, and I would say, suggest typing them in is probably easier, but if you really would prefer to ask, we should be able to unmute um, if you raise your hand and you've entered <coughs> the audio pin. So any questions? We couldn't have answered all the questions, Catherine. I know. Somebody just needs to break the ice and then we'll get a whole bunch of them, I think. Just telling you. So, so one question typed in that will be actually easier to answer privately. So that is being typed in and you're getting a response through the webinar tool. Any other questions? Okay, if there's a question about should I be able to log into the app, my MEMA password is not working. That is, the app does not use your MEMA password. That is a separate username and password that's been assigned by Advocacy Day. We will be sending those out, uh, if not today, uh, early tomorrow morning, um, just as things are getting finalized. Uh, there's a question from a first-time attendee. Can we mostly count on group leaders to lead the meeting discussions? What I would recommend is that, uh, and what we'll be uh, expecting of the group leaders, and many of the group leaders are either lawyers or lobbyists we've worked with closely or lobbyists for member companies, and in, usually internal lobbyists for member companies here in town. Um, the group leader will introduce MEMA, talk about MEMA very briefly. Uh, but I would recommend don't be shy, be prepared to talk about your company, but if you're concerned about the policy conversations, uh, your group leaders should be fairly well versed in some of the policy questions that we'll be discussing. And if, if it's your, if you're the constituent, you really should at least talk about your company. If you're not comfortable with the details of policy, that's fine, but what your company makes, what it makes in the district, how many jobs, that sort of stuff. And oftentimes, the group leaders might actually go around and have everybody introduce themselves and, and, and with that sort of information, and then and then you know highlight the policy things that need to be highlighted after the introductions. Other questions? Well, we will be sending around these slides after. Uh, my email is on there, but if you're on the webinar, you've already received multiple emails from me. You know how to get in touch with me. Um, shoot me an email. Uh, you'll either hear back from me, Melanie, or Bill, or someone else on the MEMA team uh, if there's no more questions. And I don't see anyone. It doesn't look like there's any more questions. Thank you all for attending. Thank you all for registering for the summit. We are really looking forward to seeing you next week. This is a critical time for the industry. Uh, so your attendance here and your willingness to represent the industry here in Washington and deliver the message is vitally important. Um, I do expect we'll have a lot of conversations about Auto 232s, the investigation, and the threat and impact of tariffs. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you. If you've got questions between now and then, uh, you know how to get in touch with me. We can get in touch with the rest of the team. And thank you for your time. Yeah, and I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you for volunteering to come to D.C. And just give us a holler if you need anything. Bye-bye.